I thought I knew every inch of her until anonymous photos arrived exposing a nightmare I couldn't ignore. Now I'm left questioning, is this a cruel trick, or has Lisa been hiding a betrayal too devastating to face? I'm John that day I'm sitting in my office at home, the glow from the computer screen barely lighting up the room. It's just another evening, or at least it was supposed to be. Lisa and I have been married for three years now. It's my second shot at this whole marriage thing, and I've been putting everything I have into it. We've had our good days and bad days like any couple, but I've always believed that what we have is solid, built on mutual respect and understanding. As I glance at the clock, I see it's just after 7 p.m. That's when an email notification catches my eye, an anonymous sender which is odd and unsettling. Curiosity mixed with a hint of dread compels me to open it. Attached are several pictures with a message that chills me to the bone. See for yourself what your wife does when you're not around. I hesitate for a moment but then click through. The pictures start loading and I feel a cold sweat breaking out. They show a woman engaged in sexual acts with different partners. The woman's face is cleverly obscured, no eyes, no complete facial features that would make her instantly recognizable. Just parts of her mouth, her nose, things like that. Despite the lack of full facial recognition, a sinking feeling in my gut tells me it's Lisa I know her body every curve and every line. There's no mistaking the familiarity of the shapes and details in those images, but there's no absolute proof, just a terrifying possibility. I try to tell myself it can't be true. This has to be some sick joke or a mistake, but denial is a heavy blanket, suffocating and full of fear. I run my hands through my hair, trying to make sense of it all. My heart is racing, anger bubbling up, but there's also betrayal slicing through me. I sit back, overwhelmed by emotions. How do I even begin to deal with this? The thought of confronting Confronting Lisa terrifies me as much as it compels me. What if it's true? What if it's not? I'm caught in a storm of doubt and every possible outcome feels like it's going to tear my life apart. I shut down the computer. The screen goes dark and I'm left in the quiet of my office, alone with my thoughts. It feels like the walls are closing in on me, each second heavier than the last. I need to talk to her to confront this head-on, but I'm scared of what I might find out. The rest of the night stretches out before me, long and uncertain. I reopen the email after a brief respite stealing myself against the tumult of emotions it had already stirred. The images, still there waiting like uninvited guests, seemed even more imposing than before. As I began to click through them, my focus narrowed on the crafty ways each photo was manipulated to obscure the face of the woman they claimed was Lisa in one image. The angle was such that her hair fell forward, curtaining most of her face except for her lips. Those lips, slightly parted in a familiar expression, sent a jolt through me. They resembled Lisa's, especially the way the upper lip peaked in a subtle bow, just like hers when she smiled. Another photo showed only the side profile from the nose down. Her nose, the slight bump on the bridge from an old high school soccer injury, was unmistakable. Or at least it seemed so to me. Each photo was a puzzle, a sinister game of hide-and-seek. Eyes, the windows to the soul, and perhaps the most identifying feature were always conveniently blocked by a hand, a shadow, or the angle of the shot. It was clever. Too clever, and it felt personally tailored to inject doubt and paranoia into my thoughts. Turning my attention to the body in the photos, I tried to be as objective as possible, which proved almost impossible. I knew Lisa's body intimately, the mole on her right shoulder, the faint scar on her thigh from a childhood fall, the tattoo of a little star on her ankle, hidden, unless you knew where to look. As I scanned the images, each of these marks checked out, aligning with what was represented before me. The turmoil in me grew as these recognitions piled up. The emotional roller coaster jerked me between denial and reluctant acceptance. How could someone so similar to Lisa exist? And why would someone go through the effort of staging these scenes with a look-alike? The logistics of such a deception seemed far-fetched, yet the alternative, that it was indeed Lisa, was devastating. My methodical comparison grew obsessive. I fetched old photos from our trips to the beach, paused videos to catch her in motion, matching moles and scars with the woman in these unsettling images. Each match twisted the knife a bit deeper, each similarity a confirmation I wished to avoid. Sitting there, surrounded by these digital and physical fragments of my life with Lisa, the doubt was suffocating. My mind raced with scenarios, explanations, justifications. Could there have been a mistake? Could this be an elaborate hoax? Yet the personal details, the intimate, tiny landmarks of her body? How could they be duplicated so precisely? I felt betrayed, not just by the potential actions the photos suggested, but by the invasion of our private life, the exposure, and the scrutiny it forced upon us. It was as if our intimacy had been stolen, repurposed to play someone else's cruel game. The trust I had in Lisa, in our bond, felt undermined, slowly eroded by each click through the photos. I needed to confront her, to ask her, to hear her deny it with her own words. Yet, a part of me dreaded that confrontation. What if her denial couldn't extinguish the seeds of doubt these images had planted? The prospect of living in a constant state of suspicion was paralyzing. The emotional weight of the situation was overwhelming. Here I was, dragged into a nightmare scenario, piecing together the reality of my marriage from digital shadows and hidden truths. My love for Lisa 
battled with a creeping dread that something fundamental in our relationship was amiss. As I sat there, alone with my thoughts in the glaring light of the screen, I felt a profound sense of isolation. The room seemed to close in around me, each breath heavier than the last, each thought darker than the one before. The tension was palpable as I sat at the kitchen table, waiting for Lisa to come home. I had decided that confronting her was the only way to move forward, whether to clear the air or confirm my fears. The printed photos lay in a neat stack beside me, their presence like a physical weight. Lisa walked in, cheerful and unsuspecting, her day evidently having gone well. She noticed my somber mood immediately and her smile faded as she approached. What's wrong? She asked. Her voice tinged with concern. I took a deep breath, my hands trembling slightly as I slid the stack of photos across the table towards her. I need you to look at these, I said trying to keep my voice steady. Lisa looked puzzled but picked up the photos. As she flipped through them, her confusion turned to shock and then to anger. What is this? She demanded, her eyes finally meeting mine, filled with hurt. These came to me today, anonymously. They're saying it's you in these pictures, I replied. Struggling to maintain composure, Lisa's face hardened. And you believe them? You think I would do this? It's hard not to, I confessed, my voice cracking. I recognize things, Lisa, your mole. The scar on your leg. Are you kidding me? She interrupted her voice rising. Do you know how many people have moles or scars? This is ridiculous, John, but it's not just any mole or scar. It's where they are, how they look. It's all too specific, too familiar. Lisa threw the photos down and crossed her arms. I can't believe this. You think I'm capable of this just because of some photos that anyone could have manipulated? I don't even know these people. Her denial was adamant, her indignation clear. John, this isn't me. Someone is trying to mess with us, to ruin our marriage. Can't you see that? How can you let some anonymous trash shake what we have? I felt torn, her words battling the mounting evidence before me. I want to believe you, I do. But I'm scared, Lisa. I'm scared of what it means if it's true. And I'm scared too, she replied, her voice softening. Scared that you don't trust me. That our marriage means so little to you that you'd think I could betray you like this. We stared at each other. The gap between us filled with doubt and pain. Look, she continued. I've been with you here. Every day. When would I even have the time to do this? Her gesture to the photos was one of dismissal, of contempt for the accusation they represented. But how can someone fake this? It looks so real, so exact, I murmured more to myself than to her. Photoshop John ever heard of it. Lisa was almost scoffing now. People can create anything they want with technology these days. Why is it so hard to believe that someone might want to hurt us? Her arguments made sense and yet the doubt lingered. I don't know what to believe anymore, Lisa sighed, her anger receding somewhat as she saw my distress. I am telling you the truth. It's not me. I don't know how to prove it to you beyond telling you and trusting you'll believe me. I nodded, the conflict within me churning. I need some time, Lisa, I need to think. Fine, she said, her voice thick with emotion. Think about our marriage, whether my words mean anything to you. She left the room then, leaving me alone with the photos and my swirling thoughts. The confrontation had not brought the clarity I had hoped for. Instead, it deepened the chasm of uncertainty and mistrust between us. As I sat there looking again at the pictures, I realized that no matter what the truth was, the damage was already significant. Whether these images were real or falsified, the seed of doubt had been sown, and I wondered if it could ever be uprooted. After Lisa left the room, I remained seated, the silence of the house amplifying the turmoil within me. My heart raced as I picked up the photographs again, each image echoing back my deepest fears and insecurities. This wasn't just about the pictures, it was about trust, about my ability to discern reality in my own marriage. The thought of someone deliberately trying to sabotage our relationship was terrifying, yet the alternative, that Lisa could betray me so profoundly was equally unbearable. The internal conflict gnawed at me. Doubt and suspicion clouded my judgment, making it difficult to separate rational thoughts from emotional reactions. Every moment I had spent with Lisa over the past years replayed in my mind, each memory now tainted with a shadow of doubt. Had there been signs I missed? Had her laughter been a little too forced? Her excuses a little too convenient? Reflecting on my past relationships, particularly my first marriage, I recognized a pattern of mistrust and insecurity that had contributed to its downfall. I had promised myself not to carry these insecurities into another relationship, yet here I was, feeling the same old fears creeping in. It pained me to admit that perhaps I hadn't learned as much as I thought. The realization that my unresolved issues could be projecting false narratives onto Lisa was a bitter pill to swallow. I pondered the implications of both possibilities. If the photos were indeed of Lisa, the betrayal would cut deep. It would mean she had been living a double life, deceiving me while pretending to be committed to our marriage. How could I continue to live with someone who had shattered my trust so thoroughly? Could a relationship survive such deceit? On the other hand, if the photos were a fabrication, our marriage was being tested by an external threat. Would Lisa forgive my doubts and my accusations? Could she understand my fears, or would she see them as unforgivable? As I sat alone, the weight of the situation pressed heavily on me. My love for Lisa battled against the horrifying possibility of her infidelity. This struggle was not just about whether I could trust her, but whether I could trust my own judgment. Had my previous experiences clouded my perception to the point where I could no longer give her the benefit of the doubt? The house felt emptier than usual, 
the rooms echoing back my conflicted thoughts. I missed the comfort that Lisa's presence usually brought, yet her absence allowed me the space to think without influence. I needed to determine where these feelings were coming from. Was it simply fear, or were there legitimate reasons for my suspicions? I decided to approach the problem logically. I listed facts and evidence on one side, emotions and feelings on the other. The facts were thin, anonymous photos, no concrete proof, just coincidences in appearance. The emotions, however, were thick with fear, insecurity, and remnants of past hurts. It was clear that my emotional response might be clouding my ability to see the situation clearly. The more I thought about it, the more I realized how crucial it was to communicate openly with Lisa if we were to overcome this. Whether as a victim of a cruel hoax or as a couple facing infidelity, we needed to face it together. Hiding my feelings or allowing my insecurities to dictate my actions would only lead to further damage. I also considered the broader implications of either scenario on our future. If Lisa was innocent, we would need to strengthen our trust and possibly seek help to deal with the trauma of this attack on our marriage. We might even need to investigate who would want to harm us this way and why. If she wasn't innocent, then I would have to make some tough decisions about my own future and what I could forgive. Sleep was elusive that night. The bed felt colder, the shadows in the room longer. My mind raced with scenarios, each more painful than the last. The early morning hours brought no relief, only a deepening sense of unease. By dawn, I had reached a decision. I would confront the situation head-on, seeking clarity and truth, regardless of the outcome. I owed it to both Lisa and myself to resolve this doubt once and for all, to reclaim the trust that was the foundation of our relationship, or to accept its collapse under the weight of truths too heavy to bear. As the first light of morning filtered through the curtains, I prepared myself to face whatever the day might bring. My heart was heavy, but my resolve was firm. No matter what happened, I needed to find peace and move forward, either with Lisa by my side or on a new path alone. As the investigation into the anonymous photographs unfolded, the emotional stakes were incredibly high. I grappled with my doubts and my commitment to uncover the truth while Mark, the digital forensics expert, meticulously dissected the images. Each discovery he made amplified the tension. The superimposed details, the artificial blending of shadows, the digital breadcrumbs he uncovered did not just hint at manipulation, they screamed of a deliberate malicious intent to deceive. When the source of the email was finally traced back to an old friend of Lisa's, someone whom I had met and trusted, the betrayal felt like a physical blow. This was a person who had sat at our dinner table, laughed with us, and all the while harbored intentions to dismantle our happiness. Confronting him was a dramatic showdown. We met in a quiet corner of a local cafe, the air thick with tension. His initial denial added to the suspense, his face a mask of feigned ignorance. But as I laid out the evidence, his facade had crumbled. The admission when it came was not just a simple confession. It was a torrent of pent-up jealousy and frustration. I loved her first, he blurted, his voice cracking with emotion. You were never right for her. I thought once you were out of the picture she'd see that. His words were like daggers, but they paled in comparison to the pain of his betrayal. The confrontation left me reeling, not just from what was said, but from the raw palpable desperation in his voice. Returning home to Lisa, I was a mix of emotions. The relief of having discovered the truth was tangled with sorrow for the ordeal I had put her through. Our conversation that evening was one of the most intense we had ever had. I recounted every detail from the digital inconsistencies to the painful confession of her old friend. Lisa listened, her face a canvas of changing emotions, shock, sadness, and finally relief. I never doubted you, not really, she said, her hand reaching across to squeeze mine, a physical reconnect that spoke volumes of her trust and forgiveness. But knowing how far you went to clear this up, that means everything. Each day felt like walking on a tightrope, balancing between normalcy and the undercurrent of doubt and suspicion that the anonymous photos had introduced into our lives. During the day, we tried to keep to our usual routines. Lisa went to work, and I handled my business from home. But the evenings, once a time for relaxation and togetherness, had subtly shifted. We still sat down for dinner together, still talked about our day, but the conversations often felt strained, punctuated by pauses that seemed to carry more weight than the words themselves. I noticed small changes in Lisa's behavior. She was quieter than usual, her smiles didn't reach her eyes as they used to, and she seemed to retreat into herself more often. It wasn't overt. Anyone who didn't know her as well as I did might not have noticed anything at all. But to me, these were loud alarms over the silent sound of our growing distance, Trying to bridge this gap, I made efforts to engage her in activities we both enjoyed, watching our favorite TV shows, going for walks in the park, trying out new recipes together. Sometimes these moments felt like old times and a sense of hope would bubble up within me, but more often they served as stark reminders of the ease and comfort that seemed just out of reach. As nights turned into weeks, the uncertainty began to weave itself into the fabric of our daily lives. Each loving gesture, each shared laugh, was shadowed by the unspoken questions that lingered between us. Was this real or just a facade? Could we truly get back to where we once were or had something irrevocably shifted? The ongoing uncertainty was exhausting, both emotionally and mentally. There were days I felt optimistic, buoyed by moments of close or a particularly good day spent together. 
but there were also nights I lay awake, staring at the ceiling, wondering if the foundation we built our relationship on was strong enough to withstand the storm. In these moments of solitude, I realized how much of life is out of our control, how circumstances can change with startling rapidity, and how the known can become unknown in the blink of an eye. Yet it also underscored the importance of what remained constant, the effort, the choice to strive for understanding and to cling to the fragments of normalcy that could still be salvaged. As Lisa and I committed to moving forward together, choosing trust over suspicion, we sought the guidance of a couple's therapist. This decision marked the beginning of a new chapter in our relationship, one that required facing our vulnerabilities and insecurities head-on. Our first therapy session was tentative, as we both navigated the unfamiliar territory of discussing our deepest fears with a stranger. The therapist, Dr. Helen, provided a safe space, her office a sanctuary where words that often went unspoken could finally be aired. We discussed the impact of the photos, and I shared my feelings of betrayal, not just by the anonymous sender but also by my own doubts about Lisa. Lisa spoke candidly about her sense of violation and the hurt caused by my suspicions. It felt as though our years together, our moments of intimacy, weren't enough to keep your trust in me, she said her voice steady but tinged with sadness. Dr. Helen encouraged us to explore these feelings further, pushing us to understand not just the immediate reactions to the photos but also the deeper, underlying issues in our relationship. Trust isn't just built on faith, she explained. It's also built on the foundation of understanding each other's fears and vulnerabilities. Over several sessions we delved into our pasts, my previous marriage that had instilled a deep-seated fear of being deceived again, and Lisa's experience with being unjustly accused in her professional life, which made her fiercely protective of her integrity. Understanding these aspects of each other helped us see how quickly we could trigger each other's insecurities without meaning to. As we progressed in therapy, our homework was to practice transparency and vulnerability. We scheduled regular check-ins at home where we shared anything that weighed on us, no matter how small it seemed. These moments were awkward at first, laden with hesitations, but gradually they became our truth sessions, filled with raw and honest exchanges. Therapy sessions were interspersed with activities designed to rebuild our emotional connection. We revisited places that held special memories for both of us, like the park where we had picnicked on our first date, and the beach where we celebrated our first anniversary. Each visit was an opportunity to discuss not just the past but our dreams for the future, slowly weaving new threads into the tapestry of our marriage. Dr. Helen suggested we write letters to each other, not texts or emails, but old-fashioned pen and paper letters. Writing allowed us to express thoughts and feelings that were too difficult to say out loud. Reading Lisa's letters, I saw the depth of her love and her pain, her commitment to us, and her fears about losing what we had. My responses echoed my resolve to move past my doubts to affirm my trust in her and my gratitude for her strength and patience. Halfway through the year, we decided to renew our vows. It was a simple ceremony, just us and a few close friends and family in the same little chapel where we had married. Standing before Lisa, repeating my commitment to her felt profoundly different this time. It was a promise not just of love, but of faith in our growth and understanding as a couple. As we continued therapy, we learned to embrace not just the easy love of good days, but also the challenging love of bad days. We recognized that while the scars of this ordeal might never completely fade, they were testament to our resilience and commitment to each other. Through it all, Lisa and I learned to navigate this new reality, finding solace in our resilience. And in the understanding that while uncertainty might be a part of our lives for now, it didn't have to define our relationship. We were more than this crisis and with time perhaps we could rebuild what seemed threatened, finding new depths of trust and commitment amidst the turmoil.